Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churin. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And as always, guys, welcome to our show. Well, guys, we got another great episode for you today, including some Americans in Germany returning to the pitch. And also, guys, we had a stellar man of the match performance for one of our American players in the championship, helping his club avoid relegation. And finally, we saw some more minutes for a young American striker. All that and more in this episode. So the first player we want to start our episode today with is none other than Christian Pulisic. So Christian made his return from injury, subbing on in the 71st minute for Dortmund in their big 4-0 win over the weekend um, against Freiburg. And in this game, you know, Christian came back, looked pretty lively. He actually had a really nice um, kind of, I guess, shot in the box that was uh, deflected off the goalpost and then actually caused a handball just like a moment later uh, when the ball came back. And that resulted in a penalty. Dortmund scored on that penalty and that pushed their lead to four. So, you know, all in all, Pat, it was a, a pretty good, you know, small performance from Christian. And it was something, you know, that we're, we're I know we're both pretty happy to see, uh, especially with the Gold Cup coming up. Um, you know, we're just happy to see him back on the pitch. Yeah, absolutely, Austin. And it, 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 like you mentioned, it seems like he really was, uh, you know, putting a, a great effort to, to end his uh, career at, you know, his Dortmund career, you could say. Um, he was really, uh, you know, trying to make a difference and uh, not kind of, you know, jogging around the pitch, but really putting in that effort. Yeah, I would say that. Um, there was another play, I think it was like right after he subbed on, where he just full out sprinted to try to get to um, like a back pass and a ball that was being played in, you know, Freiburg's uh, defensive third. And it was just one of those like, like plays where it just showed kind of like you said, Pat, where, you know, he's trying to make the most of the minutes he's on the pitch and, um, make the most of his, you know, waning Dortmund career at this point. So, um, yeah, got to respect the hustle, got to love the hustle. And, um, yeah, Pat, I'm, I'm just really excited to see him back on the pitch. Um, yeah, I, I'm, know, I'm with you, Austin. Yeah. And, I was uh, say, he had his injury troubles all year, so. Um, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you think, though? Um, I know this, that uh, what are the chances that Pulisic lifts that uh, elusive uh, you know, German title, you know, that trophy there? Um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, you know, Dortmund had their opportunity to really put the the title race, maybe not to bed, but, you know, get some distance on Bayern, um, you know, when they played, what was it, two weeks ago? And they completely failed. That was brutal. So, that was brutal. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they deserve to win the trophy anymore, but, you know, at the moment they're only one point back from Bayern, they are a ways back on goal differential, though. I think it's somewhere around like 14. Um, uh, Byron has like a plus 14 goal differential on Dortmund. So they really so, need them to lose. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, if right now I don't think really there's a situation where, where Dortmund could tie on points with, with Byron. Well, I guess, yeah, if Byron loses and Dortmund ties, then that's a situation where they could, you know, uh, tie at the end of the season here. But um yeah, you know, Dortmund have kind of a tough schedule coming up. Um, you know, looking at their last four games, um, that's all that's left in the Bundesliga right now. They have, uh, I think it's it's uh, Bremen, or no, sorry, it's Schalke in the River Derby next week, which will be a big one, especially since, you know, Pulisic and McKenney are back. Yeah, so and stay then, tuned and uh, watch that one, guys. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully we'll see both of them on the field. Um, you know, Weston came back, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, you know, that'll be a big game for Dortmund. And then they have, I believe, Bremen, Dusseldorf, and Gladbach. So those are all some some pretty good teams. You know, Bremen will give teams a pretty good game this year. Dusseldorf's very hot and cold, so you don't really know what you're going to get with them. And then Gladbach, I believe, is in fifth at the moment, Pat. So, you know, those are some some decent uh, opponents coming up for them, games that they, they should be favorites in. But at the same time, you know, they all have their own little storylines, I feel. And then, um, you know, looking at uh, Bayern's schedule coming up, they have games against, I believe it's Hanover and Nuremberg. So the two, what it looks like, relegated teams in the Bundesliga. 
And then they finished their season against uh, RB Leipzig, which is the third place team. And then Eintracht Frankfurt, which is the fourth place team. So, you know, I would almost argue that Bayern have a, a tougher schedule here at the end of the season. Oh, yeah, that, that's a good point. I mean, especially since you laid it all out there, I, I would agree with you there. And, uh, I'm, you know, fingers crossed that, uh, you know, Pulisic can lift that title. But it really looks like he is, like you said, making an impact with the time he has and could be really crucial if he can uh, keep going with some of these performances down the stretch here. Yeah, and, um, you know, the one thing I think we mentioned off the air looking at Byron's schedule is maybe uh, we could get some help from from Tyler Adams in that last game for uh, against Byron or second-to-last game. Maybe uh, he could help Leipzig pull out a big upset over Byron and uh, help Christian maybe lift that title. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Christian would really appreciate that, you know, from another fellow American in the Bundesliga. <laughs> yeah, right. We just don't need Josh Sargent scoring next week against uh, Dortmund. Oh, yeah. yeah. That... <laughs> or two weeks from now, I guess. As so. much as we would love to see that, too. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that would be that would be a brutal way for a uh, for brutal, you know, ending to the Bundesliga season for us American fans. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, you know, good to see Christian back. Pretty good performance in, you know, a limited performance. But... Nonetheless, uh, yeah. So let's uh, now let's move over to England and talk about a player who's really made a big difference for his club and is really taking advantage of his opportunity this season. And Pat, who would that be? In Austin, that would be Matt Miazga. That was a perfect segue, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> Matt Miazga, um, uh, this most recently, I think it was actually today uh, that they were filming, just played uh, West Brom and they drew 0-0. Zero, zero. So uh, West Brom, I think, is maybe third uh, in the championship, somewhere in the top four there. So they're a pretty okay. solid team. And uh, he performed very well. He got the man of the match um, overall, so that's fantastic um, there. And he also, just want to highlight some stats, had 83% pass accuracy, um, so 46 of 55 passes completed. Um, again, won some solid aerial duels, but looked all in all very impressive. A lot of the fans' uh, reaction on Twitter and social media were very positive especially his whole time on loan here, Austin. Um, but there was a moment, I think, in the second half where he had kind of one of those, you know, everyone has, I guess, one or two uh, not so bright, as Jurgen Klopp would put it, uh, moments uh, <laughs> in the game where he kind of lost, gave the ball away right in the middle of the pitch. They had a breakaway and pretty much like one-on-one with the keeper there. And Miazga sprinted back and made a last-ditch tackle to prevent that from happening. So that was good hustle, but it probably should not have even gotten there. Nonetheless, Austin, um, overall a great performance from him. Yeah, so, you know, seeing him on this loan and seeing how the fans have reacted to him, that that gets me really excited, Pat. I don't know. What do you think? I, I think, you know, I think we should all be very excited. And it's funny that some of the comments I was reading was, you know, Matt Miazga might be over, you know, just because they, they're they're doing very well for what they were in for the first half of the season. But a lot of the comments were, Matt Miazga's great. He He's looking like a Premier League defender. So, and that just not only came from one or two, but that was multiple accounts that I was, you know, scrolling through and checking out some highlights of, of his performances. So he really has been stepping up his game and it'd be you know, great to see him maybe at a lower level of Premier League table uh, or Premier League t- uh, team, Austin. Yeah. I, you know, we've talked about this in, in past episodes. I, you know, I think Matt could definitely make that, that jump up to maybe a lower Premier League team um, or go to a team that maybe just gets relegated and is trying to vie for getting back up in one season next year. Although looking at the teams that are going to get relegated now that I think about it in the Premier League, I'm not sure if I'd really want them going to any of those teams. Yeah, right? It's yeah, not, not looking so good. Field. Absolutely not. <laughs> Right there with you. But uh, speaking of uh, bringing up relegation and stuff, um, Miazga actually, with this performance, this draw, puts him six points clear of relegation with just two games to go in the championship. So all in all, uh, Destiny's in their hands, so that's good. And another interesting stat, Austin, uh, from his Twitter account, Football Wonder Kids, uh, pretty good stats. Uh, Shout out to them. Uh, Before Miazga, uh, Reading had in 28 games, Austin, they only had 23 points. Uh, gathered so once they acquired Miazga in 16 games they were able to get the same points 23 points um so that is 12 less games already in that time especially with the second half of the season where you know injuries fatigue 
uh, morale kind of being at the, the lower end of the, the table and bringing in new players on loan, that can be a messy situation. And Miazga has really, a, you know, handled that very well and seems to be really leading uh, that team from the, the back as well as his partner. I think it's Moore. I forget his first name, but yeah, Liam um, Moore. Yeah, Liam Moore. So people are raving about their partnership in such a quick time being acclimated to each other. So um, all props to Miazga, Austin. Yeah, that's a pretty impressive stat. Like you said, twelve games. That's uh, yeah, that's a lot more. You know, games left to play um, to definitely you know build on that point total. Um, if you were going to try to com- compare them evenly, um, yeah. But I believe what they only have, they only have two games <laughs> left exactly. in the championship. Got a little tongue tied there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, two games left, Austin. So uh, you know, be sure if we can get you know. Get find a championship stream for all you fans. Uh, tune in and because that's that's crunch time. That's pivotal, and it'd be great to see what Miazga's made of in that situation and uh, how he adapts. Uh, especially again, like we've mentioned the whole time, his his interesting uh, roller coaster year, you could say. And <laughs> yeah. this would be you know going right up to the top of that that roller coaster there, uh, riding high into the next season, and especially um, with the Gold Cup uh, tournament coming up. Yeah, now it's it's interesting that you mentioned the Gold Cup. I was just going to try to go there. Um, do you think he should be a starter at the Gold Cup? Ooh, that's a very good question, Austin. And uh, I'd like your love your help on this because I know a lot about <laughs> Matt Miazga, and I know he's been kind of vying between Aaron Long, and I haven't followed truthfully Aaron Long too much. But with his performances, I'd say this you know his second half of the loan, I would say he has a really good shot of being um, uh, a starter at the the Gold Cup. I think he definitely deserves a fair shot, and we'll have to see what he's made of during camp. But, I mean, Aaron Long seems to be, uh, maybe in Berhalter's eyes, having an edge. I'm not exactly – it's hard to compare, I guess, teams, but I don't know. What's, what's your take on that? It's kind of tough. Yeah, so it's, it's good that you bring up Aaron Long. So um, if you haven't really been paying attention to MLS, some of you fans that watch, uh, you know, the New York Red Bulls have not been doing well. And I, I can't say that Aaron Long's played horribly, but, you know, it's definitely not been a good season or a good start to the season for him. Um, so, yeah, I think that also kind of kind of throws a little wrench into Greg Berhalter's plans, at least, you know, uh, looking back on last camp and seeing what he, what he did, what teams he played um, in terms of, like, the back four. I, I think he's got a good, uh, you know, a good conundrum on his hand. I think – I think uh, I think Matt Miazga, in my opinion, would be the starter next to hopefully John Anthony Brooks if he gets called up. Yeah, exactly. That was the other center back. I love to uh, yeah if he gets called up. That that pairing really uh you know gets me excited for our center back uh, pairing there. I really excited to see that Austin. Yeah, and and uh, Jab actually scored today too. So oh yeah, it was a nice uh, nice yeah. run up the field, similar to what was it? I think uh, his goal against was it the Netherlands. There was another goal where he ran up the field for the U.S. I think two years ago, You're right? And that was very reminiscent of of that goal. So, yeah, I mean, I'm all for that that partnership in the future. Uh, you know, I like Aaron Long, and I I I thought he was he played pretty good last year. I liked what he did in a, a USM and T-shirt. He didn't look look too bad, but in my eyes, he he doesn't offer the same amount of um like. I feel like he's a very uh, safe player, very conservative player. You know what you're going to get from Aaron Long. But I feel like Matt Miazga from time to time will just have those really, really good games where, you know, like you said, Pat, um, you know, he wins a lot of those aerial duels. So, you know, he could be a factor on uh, corner kicks, scoring a goal, or he could play, you know, a really nice long ball up the field. Um, yeah, exactly, Austin. Awesome. You know, there- he might make those errors from time to time, kind of like you said in this last game. But I just like having that um, potential to be, you know, a game changer. As exactly. Opposed to someone who's just, you know, conservative. Yeah. But maybe that's me just trying to be risky. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think you bring up a good point, too, because just all the, um, you know, during the show, the stats that I give out, especially the area duels, but also just, yeah, those key passes breaking between the lines. Someone, when we're getting pinned back or just, you know, consistently b- bombarded, we need someone to kind of, uh, you know, obviously be there to be a kind of anchor in the back, but also when we play those teams, especially in CONCACAF, that may not be so attacking and load up their box, we need, you know, some of those center backs driving forward to open up the passes or, uh, 
you know, shift in that yeah. way. And he could definitely be a, a key asset with that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. Great analysis. Great insight, Pat. Um, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll have to see what the gold cup, uh, gold cup brings this summer. That's right. Okay. Awesome. And shifting, uh, gears, we're going back to the Bundesliga, um, for an exciting, uh, return. That's right. Another one, number two. So, uh, that would be Weston McKinney. So Weston actually came back and was inserted right back into Schalke's starting lineup for this game. And he ended up only playing 80 minutes. I, I say only because usually he goes the full game, but you know, this, this was another Schalke game. Um, you know, he played 80 minutes in a 5-2 loss to Hoffenheim. And he looked a little rusty, you know, coming back from injury. Didn't look, um, I would say, as sharp as he usually does. You know, some of his passes didn't come off, lost possession from time to time. But, you know, he still he still had some bright moments. There was um, a few kind of like one-touch passes, which really, in my opinion, made him stand out as opposed to some of the other players that, that played on the day for Schalke. Um, you know, I still think he's a, a very clever player, um, you know, a player that, that has a lot of, um, you know, good technical ability and also is not afraid to, to try some things, I guess, as Jurgen Klinsmann would say. Or, uh, who is it, Bruce Arena, maybe? Um, yeah, <laughs> so, so, yeah, you, that, was, that was on um, display in this game for Weston. And I was just going to maybe go into that a little bit. I think, you know, you know obviously, Pat, there's a lot of people on Twitter who've, um, you know, and I think we're kind of in this category as well. Maybe we, we don't try to hype them up as much as some people, but, you know, I definitely think Wes McKinney is a really good mid, midfielder. Um, you know, time will tell if he's a world-class player, but I think one of the, the big reasons why everyone's so excited about him, and that's even, you know, uh, non-American fans, is is just the fact that he's willing to, to try these, these one-touch passes and some of these... Um, I would say more advanced. Um, what would you say? Skills, maybe, Pat? Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's that's pretty good. Yeah, skills definitely. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just something that when you watch, you know, most games, you don't really see unless you're watching, like, you know, a Barcelona or a, a Bayern Munich, um, you know, Real Madrid maybe last year, not this year. But you don't really see midfielders really try to just, you know quickly move the ball unless they're confident and and actually have some, you know, skill. And and that's something that, that Weston's really done this year now that I, like, look back on and and was was just noticing in this game. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why it sets him apart from, from a lot of other, you know, midfielders in the Bundesliga and also just, you know, in world soccer. Um, and that's why I think a lot of people are, are really excited about him. Um, you know, he's always willing to – to go in for a, a bone crunching tackle, you know, win a header. But I really think it's that that offensive play of his and that that um, you know, I guess you could say creativity and also just soft touch and and um, you know, willingness to try things that really kind of sets him apart and makes yeah. him a really exciting prospect. Yeah, Austin. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's a good point because, like you said before, he he kind of had that that American mentality. We're talking a little bit off camera, but just kind of. That, that chip on your shoulder, you know, you're American and you know, over overseas and has that kind of those physical traits and more of that scrappy player. But again, that, that element, that technical ability that you're describing there is just, you know, sets him apart, like you said, from other, other players, especially, um, you know, other Americans and just Bundesliga midfielders in general. And it'd be interesting to kind of see where he can go next and where he can kind of take that to the, the U S national team. And if we can use that almost as a secret weapon, um, because I feel like a lot of people maybe not might not know him for that um, elsewhere outside of the Bundesliga, and that'd be pretty vital. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. You know, like I was saying, he's he's mostly gets pegged as like that that I wouldn't say deep lying number six, but like the the player who who's you know a brute and is like trying <laughs> to go into tackles and and um, you know be all about winning the ball back. But you know, he's really played in more of advanced positions for Schalke this year and has shown really well and looked very comfortable doing that. So just, um, you know, some, some insight and something I noticed when I was watching this game, you know, he was really the only player who was really trying to move play on quickly and was comfortable playing fast. And I think, you know, you know, 
Schalke's really struggled this year, so maybe that's just because uh, or it's very easy to see that because they aren't doing so well and not many other players on the field for Schalke are, are really trying to play fast, and when they do, they don't play you know good balls and they don't look good. Yeah. But, um, you know, Weston definitely looked like, you know, one of their best players on the day, even though I wouldn't say it was a really, really good game from him. So, um, yeah, don't want to read into it. To, to his play a little or too much you know it was his first game back from injury but just something um that i wanted to bring up and kind of get my two cents out about right. so. and awesome i think maybe Shaka just in general just quickly want to say might need to just hit that reset button and uh while mckinney is playing well just to you know once they've kind of had that those champ champions league games and all that just kind of start fresh next year in the bundesliga yeah I'm really interested to see who they get as their manager. It sounds like it might be, uh, I believe, Dieter Hecking, who used to be the Gladbach coach a little while ago, and also the Wolfsburg coach when they had Kevin De Bruyne. Um, that's like one name that's going around right now. And I'm re really interested to see, Pat, if you know Schalke really try to build around Weston because at the moment he's, I believe, their second most valuable player on the team. And you know he's one of their youngest players on the team. So... Um, maybe he becomes, I know we've talked about it, I guess, before the season started, we were saying if maybe he could fill Leon Goretzka's shoes, but it looks like he very well could be kind of the, the next Leon Goretzka for, for Schalke, which is, you know, everything we were hoping for at the beginning yeah, of the season. Like that awesome. I like that comparison. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So now let's move on to another player in Germany who got his third consecutive appearance for, um, you know, a, a a Bundesliga team, and that would be Sebastian Soto. So, Pat, again this week, Sebastian came on as a substitute, and this time he only played six minutes for Hanover, um, although Hanover picked up a point this weekend, and that was in a 0-0 draw. So, you know, again, it was a very short appearance for uh, Sebastian. You know, he looked, like I said in the, the last appearance, pretty comfortable um, out there. He looked very active. Um you know, he was talking to players around him, even, you know, yelling from time to time at players to kind of get get back or help him, uh, you know, pressure when they were, um, you know, pressing uh, Hertha's back line. But, um, yeah, like I said, a very small sample size. And, Pat, I think there was one stat I told you off air, and that was that in the three games he's played, which he's played a combined 29 minutes, he's completed all three of his passes – so you can hey, just, that's a plus. <laughs> yeah, that Sh yeah. shows you uh, how much little uh, Hanover really has possession when he comes in. <laughs> yeah, and it also shows you know how little he has the ball in his foot. So, um, hey, it is important to note, Pat, that he has one key pass out of those three passes. So, hey, that's, that's um, better than zero, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a plus. So, yeah, yeah you know, more minutes for Sebastian. Um, you know. I think it shows that he's definitely a player who will be getting consistent minutes next year, or at least to start the season. And yeah, I, I'm excited to see more. I, I hope he starts one of these last four games. I, I was, I really was going to ask you, Austin, why not? I was going to ask you, what do you, what do you think that his chances are of getting, you know, more minutes in this garbage time? Do we see him for maybe a 45 minute uh, period or what do you think? Uh, I would be perfectly fine with that. Uh, I, I really just don't see why not. Um, you know, I believe Hanover is playing Nikolai Moeller, who's on loan to them at the moment. So it's not like they're really going to be uh, – like he's going to be gone next year to my knowledge. So I don't see why playing him in a game that's pretty much meaningless coming up, um, what you're really going to gain from that. It's not like you're going to – like, you've been losing games all season. Why are you really going to be worried about, you know, scrapping for, for a few more points at the end of the year when, you're, when your fate's already sealed? So, yeah, I, I, I hope they play him for a, a 45 at least, Pat. That would be, you know, that would be great. Hopefully it would give us something to, uh, you know, talk about too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we need some goals besides Andrea. <laughs> yeah, right, who's now injured, unfortunately. I know, I know. But, um yeah, so let's hope, um, you know, let's hope we see Sebastian get some big minutes here in these last four games. Um, it is important to note that uh, at Hanover, it sounds like Chris Gloucester's doing a pretty good job as well. I know there was an interview with him on the Scuffed podcast, so I'll definitely check that out. You know, Adam Bell's over at Scuffed, 
does yeah, uh, awesome. a lot of really good work. Yeah, just actually uh, listened to that uh, today, and uh, yeah, that, that was a, f- a fantastic uh, podcast there. Yeah, and it really gives you kind of uh, an idea of what the Hanover setup is like, and you know, it showed uh, Chris Gloucester went from the U19 team when they thought he was ready to up to the U23 team, and um, you know, it sounds like he's been training a decent amount with their first team there. So I wouldn't be shocked if maybe we see Chris Gloucester. Um, I hope I would hope maybe sometime this year, but I, I definitely think we'll see him in preseason with Hanover. And you know, there was a, a tweet from some um, I can't remember if it was a Hanover specific publication or just a, a German soccer publication, but it was basically um, a publication that was saying that Hanover, or uh, excuse me, Chris Gloucester was the player that most Hanover fans wanted to see. Um, on the field if they had their their wish oh so, really Ooh, that's good that's, to know. yeah that's that's pretty uh impressive i don't think it was very uh i don't think it was a very american-centric um poll either so um yeah so it sounds like some some people or some fans of hanover are excited about him and yeah you know the other thing i wanted to bring up too with going into chris gloucester a little bit is that he did experience some um i guess it was racist chants or racist um yeah gestures or chants things like that yeah yeah, um i I think it was like monkey noises which is just completely you know disappointing and disgusting something that should definitely not be in the game of soccer um so that was unfortunate to hear in that interview as well and um yeah yeah. we're rooting for you chris and um yeah you know we've seen sebastian play for for hanover this year and we hope we can see chris Chris Gloucester very soon. Sounds like uh, Hanover is going to be a, a hot spot there, Austin, for Americans. I hope anywhere, uh, anywhere in Germany, I'd be fine with that. As, as long as you know it's it's a team that's competing for for Bundesliga time, even if they're not going to be in the Bundesliga next year. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so uh, yeah, that's it from for this part of our episode. Now let's go over to quick kicks. All right, guys, it's about that time. It's uh, my favorite time of the show, and hopefully it's yours as well. It's none other than Quick Kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altador over the wall, and that one is in! Josie Altador from a long way out. The opening goal for the United States. So to start off Quick Kicks today, we have Haji Wright, who scored another goal in Schalke's 7-0 win uh, this past Monday. That's awesome for Haji. And uh, going over to the championship, Anthony Robinson uh, played the full 90 in a 2-1 win uh, for Wigan against Preston North End. And going over to Germany, Alex Mendez started and uh, had an assist in Freiburg U19's big 3-1 win over Bayern's U19's. And heading over to Sweden, uh, Romain Gall uh, played the final 20 minutes there. Um, for Malmo in a win against uh, Sirius. And for Bayern's U19s in that same game, um, Taylor Booth started and played only 30 minutes, unfortunately coming off with an injury, but was replaced by Chris Richards, who played uh, the rest of the game, and that was, again, an unfortunate uh, 3-1 loss for them to Freiburg's U19s. That's tough, Austin. And uh, heading over to uh, Scotland uh, for Timo Wea. Uh, Timo time in the 85th minute he entered in a 0-0 draw against Hibernian. And going over to Wolfsburg's U19s, Uli Yanez uh, scored two goals and had an assist, while Michael Edwards um, started the game and we believe played the full 90, and that was in a 4-1 win um, in a friendly for their U19 team. So congrats to those guys. Awesome stuff. And uh, some unfortunate news over in the Netherlands our boy Andrea Novakovic uh, played just 34 minutes uh, before being subbed off due to an injury uh, in a 2-1 win against Eric Palmer Brown's uh, Nack Breda. That's unfortunate, Pat. Um, and going back over to Germany, Julian Green actually started, played 90, and had an assist, and was also man of the match for Greuther Firth in their uh, 1-1 draw with, I believe, Union Berlin this past weekend. That's great for Julian. And uh, again, heading over to the Netherlands, on the other side of that game, Eric Palmer-Brown had an abysmal uh, 45 minutes where he was taken off at half and an unfortunate uh, 2-1 loss for Nak Breda against Fortuna Sittard. And going over to Denmark, uh, Jonathan Amon 
uh, was back on the field this week and in their most recent game played 23 minutes, um, but that was unfortunately in a 3-0 loss to Copenhagen. So not the best, uh, you know, week to return. Yeah, that's tough, Austin. And uh, some positive news heading over to the championship. Uh, Cameron Carter-Vickers uh, started and played the full 90 in a, a hectic 4-3 win for Swansea against Rotherham. And uh, we have a move to tell you guys about. So Zian Jones, who was recently with Schalke's Academy, actually moved back stateside to the Charlotte Independence of USL. So unfortunately, you know, with him moving back uh, to America, we won't be able to cover him anymore. But as always, you know, good luck, Zian, and uh, we wish you the best. That's right, Austin. Good luck to Zian. And uh, heading over to uh, Scotland uh, with Matt Polster and Rangers. He uh, subbed in in the 87th minute in a 3-1 win against Hart. And going over to England, Charlie Kelman uh, came on and played the final 12 minutes for Southend United in their 1-1 draw with Walsall over the weekend. And uh, a player we haven't mentioned a little bit, but uh, Lyndon Gooch uh, for Sunderland uh, subbed in the 74th minute in a 1-1 draw against Peterborough. And finally, uh, Emmanuel Sabi started, played 80 minutes, and had a crucial assist in Hobro's big 3-2 win over Vin Diesel in the Danish Super League. Liga. So, you know, congrats to Emmanuel. And now, finally, we want to bring up another segment that we haven't done in a little bit, and that would be our Young Ya segment. And this week, our Young Ya would be Zico Bailey, who's an 18-year-old defender who most recently was with the LA Galaxy Academy, uh, but then spent a year in college for Cal State Fullerton, and he just moved over to Sweden and will be playing for Kalmar FF. So, you know, congrats, Zico, and uh, you know, we will definitely keep our eye on you. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like our video and subscribe down below. And also, you better not miss a single thing on our social media pages. <laughs> we have Instagram, Twitter, Austin, always putting out great content. That's right. And, uh, you know, leave a comment. Tell us what you want to see in some of these, uh, you know, upcoming videos once the season ends. We're going to kind of delve into some different topics um, and we want to, you know, cater to what you guys want to hear about. So um, yeah, reach out to us on, on Twitter or Instagram as well. Yeah. We'd love to gather your thoughts and opinions as we build to, towards something great. Austin. And what is that? That would be, and I'm booking it. We will win the 2026 world cup.